Welcome to Viral Facts. Today, I'm delighted to introduce you to my friend and colleague for about three decades, Dr. Bonnie Maldonado. Uh, we work together at Stanford in the Pediatric Infectious Disease Division. And Dr. Maldonado is internationally known for her work in, in pediatric infectious diseases and also in epidemiology. So she's absolutely the best person uh, to be helping lead us out of this pandemic um, and especially focus on children. Bonnie, thank you so much for joining us. Do you think that the vaccines are going to cause more severe side effects in children, less severe side effects, or more or less the same? Well, we uh, do have some early information about that. And what we know is that the side effects in uh, the five to 11 year old age group are very similar to those in older children and adults. And in fact, at least in these trials, it looks like the, uh, the, the number of kids who had side effects was actually a little bit lower uh, than in the older children and adults. And part of that might be due to the fact that this particular vaccine for the five to 11 year olds is one third of the dose in adults and older children. So it, I suspect that the side effects will not be worse and maybe just about the same or a little less. And the side effects that, that we've talked about that the literature has talked about is pain sometimes where the injection has been given, some fever for a day or two, uh, perhaps some tiredness, uh, fatigue. Uh, those, are, those are the common side effects, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. So what we saw, for example, here in our trials at Stanford were children who maybe had a, a bit of a headache for a day or so, maybe just not as active and playful for about a day or so, but nothing that the parents thought was a serious concern. Got it. There's, there's been a, a lot of talk, maybe out of proportion to the number of cases, but nonetheless, a lot of discussion about the heart inflammation, the, the myocarditis uh, that's occurred uh, in some children, especially uh, young boys. Uh, how prevalent is that and, and how, how serious it is, is it? Well, it's a great question because obviously people get concerned when they hear about anything involving a, a, you know, such an important organ. What we've learned is that the myocarditis or the heart inflammation that's, that occurs following uh, the mRNA vaccines, so the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, uh, are really um, very mild cases. So um, these have been uh, children who've developed the uh, myocarditis after, generally after their second dose of vaccine within about two to four days after their second dose. And the average uh, amount of, the average time that these children had symptoms was actually quite short. So on the average of about two days. Now, the majority of these children did require hospitalization primarily for observation because we didn't know uh, what this uh, side effect was but the children really did not require any invasive intervention. They were really observed. And the ones who've been followed up long enough have all had their disease, their heart, their heart inflammation resolved. So there haven't been any long-term complications. Now, the rate of myocarditis is uh, highest primarily in older teenage boys and young adult men, so between 12 and 30 years of age. Uh, in girls, the rates have really been just about the same in the, as background rates, but the highest rate is in the 16 to 17 year old boys. The uh, rates in the U.S. are about six dozen cases per million doses of vaccine given in that age group. So really what we would call a very, uh, very rare event but, uh, on the order, as I said, of uh, of uh, you know a handful of cases per million doses. And in the other age groups, the rates have been much lower than that. And again, to date, uh, these cases have, that have been followed long enough have had complete resolution of the heart inflammation. And we also know, do we not, that the myocarditis or the heart issues that accompany the natural infection, not the vaccination, but the infection itself are at a higher rate than with, with vaccination. And and if you take all of the consequences of natural infection, even in children, uh, the number of hospitalizations, the number of deaths, the number of, of serious side effects that have long-term consequences, including so-called long COVID, 
that when you compare that uh, disease burden from the natural infection, how, how does it rank up against the side effects you've just described with the vaccine? As, as parents, parents seem to be asking, well, should I get my child vaccinated and have the side effects or should I just let them get the infection? And have the problems? How do those weigh against each other? Right. So, yes. Yeah, so that's a great question. Natural immunity versus vaccine-induced immunity. Well, we know that um, the risk of developing uh, uh, serious illness in children is not as high as it is in adults. However, uh, we have seen in the five to eleven-year-old age group, eighty-three hundred uh, hospitalizations for serious COVID disease in the five to eleven-year age group. Um, and 94 deaths um, in that age group. And uh, at least half of those children had no underlying conditions. So they had no way of no, being known as to whether they would actually develop serious illness or not. So that is a risk. And we know that there is a vaccine that can prevent that risk. We also know, for example, that uh, for other vaccine preventable diseases, such as chicken pox and measles, um, and rotavirus disease and hepatitis A and B, that the risks of hospitalization and death from those diseases uh, is much lower than what we saw for COVID-19. And yet we have been successful with those vaccines in reducing further risk of death and hospitalization for those diseases. So we anticipate that COVID vaccination would do the same or better uh, for um, if we vaccinate our children rather than wait for them to get natural infection and risk uh, having serious outcomes. The other issue is we don't really know what will happen regarding what is called long COVID or long-term complications. We have seen reports that in children and adults that um, some of them can develop long-term symptoms uh, such as uh, brain fog and heart problems and lung problems after COVID illness, um, even if they haven't had symptoms of COVID um, during their infection. So it is a risk not to get your child vaccinated. Dr. Maldonado, thank you so much for your contribution to controlling the pandemic, for all of the work you've done, and for your willingness to uh, share this information. Thank you. Thank you.